Welcome to the review video on the scientific inquiry unit. In this unit, we talk a lot about observations that scientists make, whether looking at a specimen or doing an experiment. If we take a look at this picture, we can make a lot of different observations, such as there are two windows, that the house is pink. All of these observations fit underneath two categories, quantitative and qualitative observations. Those that use numbers are quantitative, those that do not use numbers are qualitative. Let's take a look at the next picture. In this picture, we can say the sun is rising or setting, the trees are on their side, there's stumps there. Now, based on our observations, we can make an inference, which is a storm knocked down by the tree. Now, if you take a look again, an inference is based on our observations, it is a guess as to what has happened or what is happening. In this case, we believe the trees have been knocked down by the wind. Okay, we can also make a prediction. In that case, we're using our observations and our inferences to decide what will happen. In this case, we just made a prediction that the workers will have to clean up the trees. They might bring their chainsaws, there might be a lot of noise, and that would be a prediction, what will happen. Now, one branch of science that deals a lot with observation is taxonomy, or the sorting and classification of living things. All living things are given a name, which is two words long. The first name stands for its genus, and the second name stands for its species. Kind of like its general name and its specific name. Your name might be Matt, that's your general name, and more specifically, you might be known as Matt Oliver. And Oliver would be your species, it'd be more specific. Our example today is Acer Rebrum, which is a scientific name, a two-part name, for what we commonly refer to as a red maple tree. Now, think about it. Say we have a group of food objects. Okay, we have milk, bananas, candy, tacos. If we were to sort those, we'd look at similarities. Okay, right off the bat, we know that they are all foods. Okay, but we start classifying. We ask ourselves questions. What do some of them have in common that others do not? For example, maybe some are solids and others are liquids. And then we branch off from there. Maybe the solids have, you know, can be classified as snacks or meals. And maybe those snacks can be classified as healthy and unhealthy. And we can get all the way down until we have a specific food. Okay, in this case, our apple. We do the exact same thing with all living things. We start off by looking at its domain. And if you can see, all organisms fit underneath a domain, and there's actually three of those. We talked about those in class. And then we have our kingdoms, and you guys have heard the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom. There are different branches of the kingdom. The phylum, class, order, family, genus, and then species. And those last two is how, our, is how we get our name, our two-part name, our genus and species. And you see right there, we have the common blackbird. We can go in through the entire list. We see what domain it's in. It's in the eukarya. You see it's in the animal kingdom. And then we branch off all the way down until we get to the last two and how we get its name, Ursus Americanus. Now, another way to look at that is, picture you were going to the mall and you were trying to find an object. So, kind of like domain, okay, we have three domains. Picture we have three malls, mall A, mall B, mall C. Now those, that object that you're looking for might be in a specific mall. So say we zoom in on mall C and we take a look at its map. Okay, if we're looking at this map, we see it has beauty stores, game stores, shoes, food, phone, teen, jewelry, women's, men's. Say we're looking for a specific shoe. We go to the shoe department. And so if we zoom in on the shoe store, we see that even the store is branched up. We have men's, women's, kids. We're like, oh, we're trying to find some women's shoes. So we go to the women's department. We recognize that even that is split up in summer and winter shoes. Just like animals, we can be even more specific. So from domain, we go off to kingdom, the phylum and class, and say we go down to just winter shoes and we're looking for boots specifically. There's heels, there's no laces, there's leather. So as you can tell, we can get very specific to each animal and that helps us because we can find new species, we can find mutations, we can see changes within its own species, again, Domain is gonna include everything, and as we get further down the list, we get more specific. 
The last part of our unit is the scientific method, which has six parts to it. The first part deals with the problem or question that we're trying to solve. In this case, we have a stick figure who's sad because he's trying to join the track team and his times aren't that great. So our problem is, what running shoe helps me run the fastest mile? That might be stated as a question or that might be a problem. I'm trying to have the fastest time and I'm not doing it. Step two is taking that problem or question and doing some research, finding what helps me get faster, what helps me run the best. And in the process, I'm going to help develop a hypothesis. That is an if then statement based on my research, based on my problem. So in this case, I'm saying if I wear Nike running shoes, then I will run my fastest mile time. And that might be based on research showing that Nike has the fastest running shoes. That might be true, that might not be for each person. So I'm gonna test that out. In step four, I'm gonna start creating my experiment. Now think about it. We need to have some set things. We need to make sure that during the experiment, our runners are running one mile because that's what we want to see. What shoe helps me run the fastest mile? We wanna make sure our runner is consistent, that he's not running against somebody who's slower in a different pair of shoes. So in this case, maybe we'll choose one runner. We'll choose three types of shoes. We'll try Nike, Adidas, and Puma. And these are actually gonna be what we change in each trial. And that would be, since I'm changing it, or the scientist is changing it, we call those independent variables, or I, what did I change in the experiment? I changed the type of shoes. Now, what am I keeping the same? The distance, and keep the runner the same. And maybe even think about the outside variables, maybe the temperature. I wanna keep that consistent for my runner. I also wanna keep the weather consistent, okay? So I want it to be a sunny day, maybe what he eats and drinks. And those would be what we call constants or controlled variables in our lab. Independence, what we change, we change the shoes. What do we keep the same? Keep the same weather, the same track, the same runner. And what do we get out of that result of our experiment is our data. And step five is part of gathering data and analyzing data. Right here we have the times or the dependent variable, which is Nike, six minutes and 12 seconds, what we measured, Adidas, seven minutes and two seconds, Puma, six minutes and four seconds. Based on that, we're gonna create a graph. If you take a look, our dependent variable was time, that's gonna be on the left or the y-axis, our independent variable are the shoes, and that's gonna be on the x-axis, and we can see the nice little graph that we analyzed. So we see our winner was Puma. So lastly, we wanna to go to our conclusion. And was our hypothesis correct? Was our conclusion that Nike gave us the fastest times to the shoe? And in this case, our hypothesis was wrong. Puma gave us the fastest track times. So in our conclusion, we wanna state, was our hypothesis correct? Why or why not? And what could we do to improve our experiment if we were to duplicate the exact same results.